Can you start a machine shop with nothing more than some equipment and a YouTube channel from zero experience? I'm about to find out. One of the things that I wanted to mention before but completely forgot was I wanted to go over some of our goals with the machine shop. A big part of our bike shop is we love to fix things that other people either don't want to deal with or can't figure out how to fix. So creative solutions has always been a big passion of ours. Uh, that's kind of where 3D printing came in. We've 3D printed a lot of kind of fun little solutions, like silly but helpful things like bigger casters for a dog's wheelchair so they could take their dog off road with them. Um, all sorts of little things like that that usually gets ignored because there's not a huge market for it. So that's one of the things we really enjoy doing is just being able to solve weird problems, less common problems. Um, and try to do it in a way that's affordable for people. Uh, we do work with a lot of the para riders, so coming up with some solutions for them is really helpful. Um, even little things like one of the national team para riders wanted a 332nd 12 tooth track cog. We couldn't find one anywhere for him, so we machined one for him. Uh, I'll probably do a video on how I did that later. Um, we've got another one where we're going to end up modifying a trike for another one of the para riders. Uh, there's always a bunch of little things like that that we love to be able to address. Uh, but unfortunately, 3D printing is not really strong enough for some of the things we need to do. Uh, and outsourcing the stuff to a machine shop, especially in small batch stuff, is really, really cost prohibitive. So being able to have access to our own machining here, um, it lets us be able to bring the cost down and it lets us prototype stuff quicker, cheaper, kind of experiment with ideas we normally wouldn't be able to pursue. Um, so that's one of the goals with the machine shop is just kind of keep looking for those creative solutions to problems that often get ignored. Um, so we really enjoy that and wanted to lean into that a little bit heavier. So those of you that have been subscribing for a while know that most of my content's been around running a bike shop, some race, race content. Um, shop's still doing well. I'll do an update video on that here soon. Actually had our best year yet, which is always exciting. But we added a big component to what we're doing. We added a machine shop as a starting low, zero experience, but, uh, used Tormach, uh PCNC 770. Uh, this is going to help us make some of our tools that you guys have been seeing that we've been outsourcing to some other machine shops here in town. Uh, it's also a nice evolution from the 3D printing side. Uh, moving from additive manufacturing to subtractive is kind of exciting. Uh, it's a lot to figure out, though. definitely a lot more going on. Uh, but I wanted to document some of that process, let you guys see what I've learned, where I made mistakes, what's been helpful. And if you guys have any con or any experience or any advice as I go along, definitely leave it in the comments below. I'd like to start with showing you the equipment I do have so you know, so you have perspective on what I'm working with um, and then also give you some background on me. Um, my background with manufacturing is pretty minimal. I learned CAD modeling so I could kind of do a little bit more with our 3D printing that let me build some tools once I learned that the same CAD models could be used to make parts out of metal. I started outsourcing some of our designs to some machine shops to have them made out of metal, uh, especially tools that wouldn't work well out of plastics, like some of our DT tools. Um, so I've got the kettle modeling experience. Uh, had to learn CAM to be able to program the CNC. Um, but I have no real machining experience outside of running a brake lathe from my automotive days. So it's definitely been a learning curve. Thankfully, there's a lot of really helpful information online like NYC CNC and Titans of CNC. Those two pages especially do so much good for the industry and teaching newcomers like myself the trade of machining. Uh, couldn't have made it this far without them. Uh, as far as equipment goes, I feel like I'm starting from a pretty capable standpoint. Even though it's lower powered equipment, it's very capable of equipment. It just doesn't run as fast as some of the higher end machines. So the main thing I'm starting with is the Tormach PCNC 770. It's a one horsepower CNC mill. Um, not a huge build area, but none of, our, none of what we make right now is. Um, but it's pretty capable. 
um, especially when you add some of these accessories. It's got a tool changer, which is really helpful. It's got flood coolant, mist coolant. Um, yeah, it's just a very good platform to learn from. The Tormach Pathpilot software interface has been really easy to learn. Uh, I've seen some videos of some other systems that looked a whole lot more daunting than Pathpilot. So picking that up's been really helpful. Uh, Tormach as a whole, not at all sponsored by them. Love to be though. But um, they've been really helpful with their sales team and their technical support team with helping me figure out some of the basics as I got started, even though I just bought a used machine. I wasn't even buying a m new machine and they're really helpful there. So that's exciting. Uh, but some of the other bigger accessories I've got to go with it are the Tormach Rapid Turn Lathe Attachment. Basically, this will bolt to your table and turn your mill into a lathe. You bolt an adapter to the spindle head, and then that's what holds the lathe tooling. And then the, you change the interface within PathPilot to act more as a lathe rather than a mill. A uh, little daunting at first, but once I actually made a part or two, it actually wasn't too bad. Um, it definitely made it out to be more difficult in my head than it actually was once I got it started. Um, so I've got that for lathe parts. Unfortunately, I only have a quick change tool post, so I don't have gang tooling or tool changer. So some parts that require multiple tools, like tools are kind of a pain. The other attachment that I have that I really like and opens up a ton of options is their fourth axis rotary table. Um, this will let me clamp a part into the table and then machine on all four axes. Um, it lets us do some designs like our EXP tool. Basically, this ends up bolted into the rotary table and then it'll spin and then just cut each one of these splines as it goes. So that's how we use it on our EXP tools. There's a ton of uses you can use with this, or ton of options you can do with this. I'm still just figuring it out. This was literally the first fourth axis part I ever made. So I still have a ton to learn, but it actually worked out better than I expected, so that was exciting. All right, so I'll show you some of the other stuff I've got to complement this stuff, kind of necessities to be able to even just get started. These are kind of extras, not at all required to get started in machining, but really nice to have, and it opens up a lot of options. I'll show you some of the other basic tooling I have. None of it's terribly complicated. Most of it came as a big package when I bought this machine used. The rapid turn and the rotary table along with some other stuff, all came as one big package deal on the U side, along with a ton of tool holders. Let's get into some of the tooling I've got. Um, all of, We honestly spend too much money at Harbor Freight. I know it's not the best, but we've got a pretty limited budget at our shop, and it gets the job done well. It's not like we're trying to hold tenths of intolerance or anything. Um, but some of the basics we have, um, set of parallels, every machine should have a bunch of those. They're dirt cheap. They're really helpful. Um, one thing I don't have up here is I've got a couple of vices. Those mate with the parallels and let you kind of offset the part a little bit from the base of the jaws. Height gauge, this lets us set our tool height. Uh, I don't have an electronic tool setter on the machine, so this is the way we're able to do that. So basically, if you're not familiar with it, take your tool, set it in here, measure the height, and then you set that in your offsets table. That way the machine knows how long this tool is and it can kind of adjust the positioning based off of that. Um, this little guy was really cool. If you're not familiar with it, it's a vacuum table. Basically lets you hold flat sheets of metal um, without any clamps on them. So the truing stand locks we do, which I'll throw a link up to, um, we do multiples on one sheet of six by 12 aluminum but I go all the way to the edge with the machining. And if I were to have clamps there, that would be really limiting. So it actually just uses suction from the bottom of the part and just holds everything down. Works really, really well. Um, I started off with a cheapy Amazon Venturi. It uses compressed air to create a vacuum. Created a great vacuum, but it is horribly inefficient. I love one of the nicer ones like the Pearson one, but I just can't afford it right now. Um, so we ended up switching to uh, just the uh, electronic vacuum pump, and so far it seems to be working really well. Um, other work holding. We have carve smart jaws on our vise. They've been really helpful for swapping jaws around really easily. Um, one thing I learned, don't get lazy and try to make stuff work without proper work holding. Every time I've been too lazy to make proper soft jaws to hold parts, 
I always regretted it and still ended up having to machine the jaws. Even for simple stuff like a hex and a circle, it, it's worth the effort to make your own jaws to make them fit. Um, other work holding we experimented with that was kind of fun. This is just 3D printed um, from PLA Plus, um, soft jaws that fit into the CarSmart jaws. Um, held surprisingly well, probably wouldn't trust it if I was trying to hold like super strict tolerances, but for like a quick prototype part on some suspension linkage we were playing around with, it actually worked really well. And then every machinist needs good measuring tools. Honestly, I do the overwhelming majority of my measuring with a basic caliper. Um, it's not even a super high end one, but it gets the job done well for not a lot of money. And again, we're not making parts that are going to go in aerospace world or anything super precise. So this gets us really close. Same thing with our uh, micrometer set from Harbor Freight. Yes, there's better out there, but for what we're doing, especially with our budget, this lets us get as good as we need to be without going completely bankrupt. Um, other work holding, this guy will hold collets and let it bolt down to the table so you can put, I've got some hex collets which we were using on our EXP tools. Um, you basically can just throw a collet in here, it'll clamp around various sizes. Tubing, hexes, whatever the collet's built for, holds it really consistently, um, really holds it really strong. Um, been really helpful. This I bolted on our fourth axis before, but you can also bolt it to the table. Um, speaking of table, uh, we have a deburring stone. Always kind of hit your table with the deburr after swapping vices around. That way there's no little uh, burrs or anything on the table that can throw your alignment off. Um, and then some of our other tools, just a ton of tool holders. Uh, 3D printed this guy, it's on Thingiverse if you want to download it. Um, the Heimer gauge is really helpful for setting zero offset. It can measure in all axes um, to get your part centered on your origin. Um, really, really handy guy. Definitely broken a few of these tips by hitting the wrong button and moving things the wrong direction or putting in a dimension that's negative instead of positive. Silly little things that end up being a $50 mistake each time you do it. Um, measure bores with this and get centered off bores, tapping heads. All of these are just kind of standard ER collet tools. Um, most of them just have some type of a end mill in it, depending on what I was cutting that point. That's about our big stuff. I've also got just a cheap Harbor Freight bandsaw, angle grinder, tumbler for deburring parts when we're done. Um, all pretty basic tools, relatively inexpensive. Um, all said and done, it's still been a lot of money and equipment. Total, I'm probably close to $30,000 between the machine, all the extras, um, and some of the expenses to go pick it up. Um, but to get into machining, that's actually really cheap. It's not unheard of for machines to cost more than my house. I've got this one set up just in my garage, if you can't tell. So yeah, that's some of the basics on where we're at, some of our goals with the machine shop. I have partnered with a couple of friends on this, Rob and Noah. You've seen Rob in some of the videos. I did not know that. Yeah. I got, the only thing I can think of, you know, biblically is like, uh, Jesus wept and <laughs> snow milled you all. Save for your sins. Everyone said you needed to find religion, so maybe you'll find it on the mountain. Yep. No, you're not seen yet, but you'll see him, I'm sure. Um, but we're excited to go down this path. Still have a lot to learn. I'm always open to constructive criticism. So if you're experienced and you've got better ways of doing something from what you see me doing, leave it in the comments. And I'm always happy to adjust. Uh, moving forward, some of the videos that I'll do more of, more videos on the process on how I make a lot of our parts uh, from modeling it all the way up to machining it. I just wanted to do a quick intro video, let you guys know what we're doing. And it'll still be very cycling focused, but there'll be a lot of other content as well. We want to start making some parts for some other industries too. Um, but a lot of that'll come in time. I'm looking forward to getting into this more and starting a YouTube channel up. It's been too long and I always enjoyed it. Uh, it's just been a busy couple of years. Um, but yeah, appreciate you guys, all your support. If you think you're into this, just give us a subscribe or a follow. Um, and we'll try to do our best to keep you guys entertained and hopefully teach you something along the way as we figure things out on our own. 
Um, anyways, thanks again. Have a good one.